Loudspeakers are devices that contain transducer elements that convert electrical energy into acoustic energy. Loudspeakers can be broken down into their various components, transducers, an enclosure, and a crossover network. There are several ways of converting electrical energy into acoustical energy. However, only a few are practical to put into commercial loudspeakers, electrodynamic, electrostatic, and piezoelectric. Generally speaking, electroacoustic transducers each contain a motor, a diaphragm, and a suspension. The motor converts the electrical energy into mechanical energy. The diaphragm converts the mechanical energy into acoustic energy by vibrating the air. The suspension serves as a support for the diaphragm and exerts a restoring force to ensure that it maintains its equilibrium. The most common type of transducer used in loudspeakers is the electrodynamic driver, which utilizes Faraday's law to convert from electrical to mechanical energy. A cone-shaped diaphragm attached to the motor converts the mechanical to acoustic energy. In an electrodynamic driver, the voice coil is suspended within a gap in a cylindrical magnet. When a voltage is applied across the voice coil, the magnetic induction causes the coil to oscillate, which moves the diaphragm, which causes the air to vibrate and sound to be created. The diaphragms or cones found on these drivers are constructed with materials ranging from treated paper to Kevlar and carbon fiber to aluminum. These drivers, known as woofers, are found in nearly all loudspeaker applications and vary greatly in size depending on the application and frequency response. These are best for reproducing low and mid-range frequencies. Cone drivers can be used for high frequencies However, the cone tends to be too heavy and cumbersome to accurately reproduce high frequencies. Instead, there are three common types of drivers or tweeters that fill this void. The dome, compression, and ribbon driver. The dome tweeter can be found on studio monitor and home loudspeakers, but are not used much in pro audio due to their lack of power handling. The compression driver is the most prevalent, with the ribbon driver gaining popularity due to its distortion-free design. The compression driver is always used in conjunction with a flared horn attached to the driver. The compression driver operates on the same principles as the cone drivers, except it compresses the acoustic energy through a waveguide or phase plug which ensures that sound from all points of the diaphragm leave as a coherent wavefront. Ribbon tweeters use a thin piece of aluminum or mylar stretched between two magnets to reproduce high frequencies. Ribbon tweeters are characteristic of low distortion and fast transit response and produce accurate sound over the dynamic range. This results in musical detail at high sound levels. Before these raw drivers can be put together to make a loudspeaker, they have to be put into a box or enclosure. The purpose of a loudspeaker's enclosure is twofold. The enclosure is necessary for separating the front and rear wave fronts and preventing them from canceling each other. The other purpose is to provide a volume of air that acts as a spring that pushes back on the diaphragm as it moves back and forth. There are two main types of enclosures, sealed and vented. The sealed or acoustic suspension enclosure has a fixed volume of air that is sealed inside. The vented or ported enclosure contains a vent where air moves in and out. The benefit of the acoustic suspension enclosure is that low frequencies tend to be tighter and more defined. The drawback is that the enclosures are generally much larger. The vented enclosure is typically smaller but the low frequencies are more difficult to control. Most commercial loudspeakers have ported enclosures. 
The loudspeaker enclosure is typically constructed of multi-layered plywood. Wood enclosures are typically assembled using glue and nails. Low-cost enclosures are simply routed, folded, and glued together, much like a cardboard box and wrapped with carpet. The enclosure's construction determines its ability to be flown. Flyable enclosures incorporate steel reinforcement inside to facilitate rigging points essential for safely suspending the enclosure overhead. Loudspeakers without integrated fly points are designed to be stacked on stage or mounted on poles. They should never be flown. Smaller loudspeaker enclosures are formed by an injection mold process using high-impact polymer. Mold-injected polymer enclosures are quite popular and represent a growing sector of compact commercial loudspeakers. Many injection mold enclosures incorporate reinforced attachment points for proper rigging. Multi-way loudspeakers require a device that divides the incoming audio signal and routes the appropriate frequencies to their respective drivers. This is known as a crossover network. There are both passive and active crossovers. Passive crossovers consist of a series of electrical filters that pass specific bands of the frequency spectrum. These signals are then sent to the proper driver within the loudspeaker. Three types of filters are used in a crossover, high pass, band pass, and low pass. The crossover frequencies in a passive network are fixed. Most passive crossovers are two or three way, which means that the signal is divided into two or three frequency bands. An active crossover is used when more control is required over the loudspeaker system in cases such as bi-amped or tri-amped loudspeaker systems. In a bi -amp configuration, the low frequency drivers and the mid and high frequency drivers each receive one signal. In a triamp configuration, each frequency section, low, mid, and highs, each receive their own signal. These configurations allow greater control over the loudspeakers, but require multiple amplifier channels. Active crossovers are typically found in powered loudspeakers or digital signal processors and reside before the amplifier and the signal path. With an outboard active crossover, the user is able to define the crossover frequencies and the steepness of slope where the filters roll off. For example, we can change the crossover frequency from 1000 Hz to 700 Hz and change the slope from minus 6 dB per octave to minus 12 dB per octave. Most professional loudspeaker manufacturers will provide the recommended crossover frequency slope, and time alignment specifications for their loudspeakers. When these three components, transducers, an enclosure, and a crossover are combined, the result is a loudspeaker. There are many types of loudspeakers available, all with variations based upon this simple composition. Most loudspeakers available are classified as full-range loudspeakers, which means that they have the ability to reproduce most of the audible frequency spectrum. In most cases, full-range loudspeakers are low-frequency deficient in that they may only respond down to 50 or 80 hertz. Most full-range loudspeaker systems require additional reinforcement in that portion of the spectrum. Examples of full-range loudspeakers include two-way and three-way loudspeakers, coaxial loudspeakers, and line array modules. Two-way loudspeakers include a woofer and a tweeter, while three-way loudspeakers include a woofer, a mid-range, and a tweeter. These are the most common loudspeakers available. Coaxial loudspeakers utilize two drivers, a woofer or mid-range driver, and a tweeter. The drivers share a common axis where the tweeter is mounted immediately in front of the cone of the low-frequency driver, creating a coherent wavefront. Coaxial loudspeakers are used in distributed ceiling applications 
home theater loudspeakers, and in automotive systems. Subwoofers are dedicated loudspeakers that provide low-frequency reinforcement to a sound system. They usually contain one or two large diameter cone drivers mounted in large enclosures. The subwoofer enclosure can be a simple rectangular box or can be complex with a series of folded horns inside. In larger venues, loudspeakers are combined to form systems which provide adequate coverage and acoustic output to satisfy the audience load and program material. Until recently, these systems consisted mainly of clustered components or loudspeakers. Within the last decade, the prevalence of line array technology has flooded the audio industry and continues to make an impact on loudspeaker and sound system design. A loudspeaker cluster or array refers to a system where various loudspeakers or components are grouped together in a central location which attempts to cover the entire audience area. These systems act as a point source. Arrays work well in theory, however they are complex entities that if designed improperly will render poor sound quality. The concept behind arraying loudspeakers is that all of the sound generated from the loudspeakers be originating at a common point, a geometric origin. Problems arise when the sound field from adjacent loudspeakers interact with one another. This results in phase cancellations and comb filtering. To experience this, play pink noise through the audio system and walk through the audience area parallel to the loudspeakers. If phase cancellation or comb filtering is occurring, a noticeable swishing sound will be heard. The line array is currently the most popular loudspeaker technology in the audio industry. The principle behind the line array is the line source. A line source behaves differently than a point source in that its propagation loss is only 3 dB per doubling of distance, while a point source loses 6 dB per doubling of distance. Line arrays use multiple modules stacked atop one another to create a line source which becomes more directional the more modules involved. When an adequate number of modules are combined, their overall sound output is highly directional down to the low frequency range and can be aimed and steered very efficiently. There are currently many different types of line array loudspeakers available, they range in size from small format to large format concert style line arrays. Some of the smaller modules include a small woofer and a tweeter, while the larger modules will have two large woofers, one or two mid-range drivers, and a high frequency horn or ribbon. Line array loudspeaker systems work on a stacking principle, which defines the vertical dispersion of the array. The more loudspeakers in a line array, the more defined the vertical pattern becomes. One advantage of the line array is its long throw characteristic and uniform pattern control over the audio spectrum. Line array technology works well in large venues with long throw requirements and adequate ceiling height. As such, the line array is used for all types of applications, including houses of worship, auditoria, stadiums, outdoor venues, concert halls, and clubs. A loudspeaker's performance is documented within its specifications and include power rating, impedance, efficiency, coverage pattern, and frequency response. Power rating is the amount of wattage the loudspeaker is designed to handle. Keep in mind most loudspeakers suffer damage from being underpowered more so than overpowered. Impedance is the nominal resistance of the loudspeaker system and should be viewed as an average. Impedance is frequency dependent. The lower the frequency, the lower the impedance. The higher the frequency, the higher the impedance. 
A loudspeaker's sensitivity or efficiency is the on-axis sound pressure level measured at one meter with an input signal of one watt. Most loudspeaker specification sheets will display sensitivity as a specific dB, one watt at one meter. Highly efficient loudspeakers will range above 95 dB at one watt at one meter. Less efficient loudspeakers will range between the low 90s and high 80s. The frequency response of a loudspeaker documents the range of frequencies it will produce, 3 dB down from the nominal level. A typical frequency response specification will look like this. 55 hertz to 18 kilohertz plus or minus 3 dB. Oftentimes manufacturers will increase the range to 6 dB in the low frequencies to accentuate their potential performance. The coverage pattern of a loudspeaker is expressed in a horizontal and vertical format. A loudspeaker with a 90 by 40 pattern will disperse its frequency response over a 90 degree horizontal plane and a 40 degree vertical plane. Coverage patterns are frequency dependent. The higher the frequency, the more directional the pattern becomes. Professional loudspeaker specifications include polar plots that graphically represent the loudspeaker's coverage pattern at various frequency octaves. When selecting a loudspeaker, certain criteria must be considered. Listening is the most important aspect when selecting a loudspeaker. Most loudspeaker manufacturers are similar in that they produce quality products what sets them apart is how their products sound. Consideration should be given to the type of loudspeaker required, installed, or portable. The type of construction is important if the loudspeaker is to be suspended. More often than not, too few loudspeakers are purchased to achieve even coverage. This is often due in part to budget restraints. In many applications, the simple addition of subwoofer loudspeakers will add the warmth and fullness many audio systems are lacking. Powered loudspeakers are becoming more popular. With proper power matching per driver and onboard electronics, powered loudspeakers are providing a well-suited solution for many loudspeaker applications. As technology increases, and digital networks become the main transport for data and communication, powered, networkable loudspeakers are sure to become the norm. Loudspeakers are devices that convert electrical energy into acoustic energy. The most common type of transducer used in loudspeakers is the electrodynamic driver, which utilizes Faraday's law to convert electrical energy to mechanical energy. There are two main types of enclosures, sealed and vented. Sealed enclosures have a fixed volume of air that is sealed inside, and ported enclosures incorporate a vent where air moves in and out. Flyable enclosures incorporate steel reinforcement inside to facilitate rigging points essential for safely suspending the enclosure overhead. Most passive crossovers are two- or three-way, which divides the signal into two or three frequency bands. Active crossovers provide the user the ability to define the crossover frequencies and the slope where the filters roll off. Subwoofers are dedicated loudspeakers that provide low-frequency reinforcement to a sound system. Problems arise when the sound field from adjacent loudspeakers interact with one another, causing phase cancellation and comb filtering. Line arrays use multiple modules stacked atop one another to create a line source which can be aimed and steered very efficiently. The loudspeaker's construction is critical if the loudspeaker is to be suspended.